Welcome back to Wizard Supercoach. I'm going to do something I haven't done this year. Uh, I'm going to give my predictions for the top eight forwards and defenders, uh, top ten mids, and top three rucks. And the reason I'm only choosing three rucks is because I think it's pretty clear cut that there's only three rucks in the running. So, uh, important thing to remember is when you look at the top eight, like in preseason, top eight players has talked a lot. Uh, for each position now when you think of that it's only relevant from the start of the year and who you pick like to start with so if you pick up a player now it's only relevant of what they score from now and who are the top eight from now so if you you know like brennan cox had a huge score to begin with like that's gone like he's not going to be top eight or whatever so he's irrelevant you can't get those points if you didn't start him so I'm just worried about who I think will be the top, not necessarily the top eight come the end of the season, but the top eight, um, the top eight scorers from this point onwards. So between round seven and 23. Uh, so I'll start with the back line. Now, this one's obvious and don't criticize me if, <laughs> if some of these are like vanilla picks because, you know, some of them just are obvious. I'm not going to put in controversial ones just for the sake of attention or whatever not going down that uh cane corns bullshit road um so nick dacos i think he'll be the top scorer from here in defense there's not too much to say about him he just keeps doing what he's doing i don't think that teams are going to be able to tag him very uh very effectively if they even try so i can't see him really slowing down he's just like He's just a pig. He just wants everything. So, and they, his teammates are willing to give it to him. So I can't see that stopping. Uh, so yeah, if, if you started Dacos when he was 500 K, well done. Um, I, along with so many others got scared off in the preseason after the Finn McGuinness tag job, but you know, it's one to learn for next year. Kind of makes me think that Sheasel next year might be a decent pick for the same reason. Anyway, uh, so number two, I've got Dawson. Um, again, another quite vanilla pick, but now that he's in the midfield for the Crom, I can't see him moving too much. And um, worst case scenario is he goes back to his half back role, and we know that he can score really well there as well. So either way, wherever he is, he's going to score well. He just looks to have gone to another level this year. Maybe it's the captaincy and the added responsibility. Um, He's just got so many avenues to score. Like he's not just relying on intercept marks and stuff like some other defenders. So yeah, I can definitely see him. He'll at least be top three. I think the top three are pretty, pretty clear cut in my opinion. Um, so number three is Tom Stewart. Now his average is only 104 at the moment, but that will pick up because there's the injury game and stuff. Um, he's probably going to have an injury game in, be in between now and the end of the season, as he usually does. But I think that those, the points that he'll make in the meantime are going to, it's going to be enough to keep him ahead, even, even if he misses a game. Um, Geelong are just starting to hit their straps too. So, and he's always a big reason why they play well. So. Um, the GMHBA games are starting to come up now that um, now they're not having to play away from there. Um, he's just going to do what he does. He's unbelievable. But yeah, there will be likely a suspension or or an injury which will keep him out of the top two. Um, so number four is Luke Ryan. And I know some people still aren't convinced on him, but the fact is he just keeps doing it. Like we've got six weeks of data now. It's pretty hard to argue with. Fremantle aren't a good team this year, so the ball's spending a lot of time down there. Uh, he takes kick-ins, he gets intercept marks. Hayden Young isn't taking his points like people thought that he would. Um, Cox isn't a threat. Uh, yeah, I just think Ryan is the real deal. And uh, yeah, I got him at number four. I'm pretty confident on uh, the top eight. Just the, the order, it's really hard to exactly order them, but you know... You get the drift. 
So number five, I've got Adam Saad. I know he's uh, he's possibly out again this week, but again, like uh, like Stewart, if he misses a week, I think he's got enough scoring power to bridge the gap. So yeah, he's looked really good, and I picked him up as a pod. It's just unfortunate that he he had that injury. So I think yeah, he'll just keep on and. Um, I don't see any reason why he's not going to. Like, I don't. Apart from Ben Keys, no one really tags him. And Carlton are always looking to give him the ball when they like to break fast from defence. So that will continue, I think. And yeah, Saad will be right up there. He's a bit iffy, I'll admit. I don't know if he'll be. Like, I've got him in five, but he probably could be anywhere from that five to eight spot. Uh, number six is Sinclair, who's currently averaging 99.8, so low for him. Uh, he's not been super impressive. Maybe it's just the, he's got a new role or something from Ross, a slight tweak to his role. Um, but yeah, I if you watch my last video, I said that sometimes it's not all about roles and stuff. Like certain players are just quality and they'll score. So I think Sinclair's one of them. I think he'll be he'll be right up there eventually. And he's probably a good value pick right now. But yeah, I'm not as sold on him as the rest because mostly it's down to Ross. Ross can do anything. Um so seven I have Jake Lloyd. And that might be a shock to some, but I think that this 77 here, now I picked him up last week and I'm still confident on him. I think that the 77 was just a um, an anomaly like because all of Sydney players were so low. Like they got the one ton and Lloyd was their seventh highest scorer for the game. So they were just shit all round. He's currently averaging 102. Um, he's playing that seagull role. They look to be giving him the ball. He's not being affected by uh, Blakey and Campbell and that anymore. So maybe last year was like the anomaly in his scoring he was maybe getting used used to a new system or something like that so yeah i'll back him in for the seventh or eighth spot and then eighth i didn't even know whether to even put him in the eight but sicily i'm i'm not liking his role he's averaging 99 he's not doing bad but he's already lost like 80k or something so He's way down on last year. I just, yeah, I'm not confident on him. I don't think I'll be picking him myself. I know a lot of people, like he's 20% owned, so a lot of people are jumping on, but yeah, I'm not, not completely sold. Like eighth is still fine if he gets there, but even then I'm, I'm not confident in eighth. Um, so now a few honorable mentions of guys that could be there. Tom Barras, now I don't think he'll be there come the end of the season, but in between now and whenever McGovern returns, I think Barras will, com like, I'm confident he'll be top eight for that time period. Um, it's just the risk in getting him, there's two, there's two risks here. One is that his scoring's inconsistent. Like he's, he's very prone to dropping 30s and 40s in between, you know, 110s, 120s. And... The other thing is that if you get him and then once McGovern comes back, you're pretty much going to have to trade him out again. So do you want to waste a trade when things are a bit dire this year? I think even for, you know, even even the best teams, it's going to be hard for. So, um, But yeah, if you just want a guy that for the next, say, I don't know, McGovern's meant to be back like after the buyers. So if you want someone in between now and then that's going to give you some you know top eight scores Barras could be a man I got Sheasel there as well now he's a complete unknown I don't think that the weekend um really told us too much I don't think Hall affected him I think he was just as I said in last night's video he's just banged up and you know he played a different role got tagged a bit it's not going to happen all the time it's only going to be teams that are struggling you know bottom teams that have to fight North Melbourne to win. They're the only ones that are going to tag him. So the top teams won't bother. 
but I've not put him in the eight because I think that he could be. Um, he's I don't know. He's more likely to be a top forward. I think so. I'll leave him for there. Um, another one is Vlosten or Vlostone or however you say it. He is a real smoky. So he's averaging ninety seven. He's had I think only one score under a hundred so far. Oh, sorry, he's had two, and one was a 90, so that's pretty good. So he's super consistent. I will not be surprised if he slots in at, like, eighth or something between now and then. Richmond aren't that good this year, so the ball's going to be down there more often. And, yeah, he's quality. He's got the good role, too. He takes intercepts, and he's just that backdoor dude down back that they give it to so he can clear it and stuff like that. So, yeah, he's definitely one to watch for. Um, Will Day, he could he could easily be top eight. Just depends what Clarko is going to. Uh, sorry, not Clarko. What Mitchell's going to do with him? Uh, Mitchell's not the most trustworthy coach, and the other knock on Day is that he's pretty injury prone. So I don't know. He's he's a good value option, but I don't know if he can sustain this. He's pretty young still too. So, and then to round out the last Smokey is Harry Himmelberg. Now, Taylor's gone down, and Himmelberg took his spot, I think, in the, the third quarter or something for a while before he went forward again. But if Taylor is out for a while, and if, this is a big if, if Kingsley decided to put Himmelberg back, then I'm confident that he would be, like, top six for that time period. So just watch out for that one. Because he's cheap as chips too. Like he's, I think he's only like 400 or something. Um, he's 385. So yeah, watch out for that one. If he was, if Kingsley had have indicated that he was uh, playing defense this year, he probably would have been like the most, the most picked player at the start of the year. Um, So I'll move on to mids now. Interesting, I can't actually see it because the the webcam thing is preventing me. Hang on. Sorry about that. Uh right, so I've got Oliver at number one. That shouldn't surprise anyone. Even when he's quiet, he's scoring ninety eight and stuff, so he's got a really high floor. And they've got an easy run coming up now, so he's going to go berserk, I think. So I don't need to say too much about him. If you don't have him, everyone should be looking at getting him. I'm looking at getting him as soon as I can. Um, number two is Laird. He might miss this week, but like I spoke about before, I think that he can bridge the gap even by missing one week. He's still good enough. Uh, Bont is third, so... Bont's had the huge game there, but I don't think we're going to see too many of them. And he has got um, the lower floor than Laird and Oliver. And even though he's prone, like he can have those huge like 180 games, he's not a uh, consistent like 130 scorer like Laird and Oliver. So, so I've got him just slightly behind, but those three easily could be, um, like I'm confident they'll be one, two, and three, but they could be in any order. And it wouldn't surprise me. Now the rest here, you can pretty much put in any order. Like it's so hard to pick. There's so many good midfielders. And apart from the three, there's no one really standing out. So I've got Walsh in four. Um, I think if he can stay fit, he's just a pig. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that one, but, um, yeah, no, I'll back him in at four. Uh, Lockie Neal at five. That's going to surprise some people, but he's got a huge ceiling and, uh, yeah, a, he's got a high floor. Like, 
He got a 76 on the weekend, but that's you rarely, rarely ever see that. And I'm very confident that Brisbane's midfield, so they're all down. I think they're going to get it together very soon. It's just a matter of adjusting to the new system with Dunkley in there. So, yeah, have faith in Neil. If you trade him now, I think it's going to burn you. Um, Liver at six. Uh, well done to anyone that started him. I know a couple of my mates did. Probably the best pot of the year. I can see him keeping it up. Like he's just taken Dunkley spot in there, and um, I know he was already in in the Bulldogs midfield, obviously. But yeah, those Dunkley CBAs now has seen an increase in Libba's score. It's far more consistent. He's kicking goals. He's just doing it all. So I actually think he's the most important guy in there at times. Like obviously Bont is flashier, but Libba's like the engine. Um, Cripps in seven. Uh, I think with Walsh back in and Pittnet uh, rucking, Cripps will just keep doing what he does. Like he's he's uh, real, real capable of like massive scores, but sometimes his floor can be low. But I think that the massive scores will take care of that, and he'll be well up there in the ten. Uh, Sarong eight, so. Him and Libba, like he'd be, he'd be challenging Libba for the best pod at the moment. Um, but yeah, he's not going to be a pod for long. So yeah, five percent owned, starting to go up. Uh, I don't think he'll sustain like the one thirties and stuff all year. Like he's five round or he's three round average, five round average is one hundred and twenty five. So he's not going to do that all year. I'm pretty confident he won't. But he'll probably drop down to like a one fifteen. Something like a 110 average, maybe. He's already at a 115 average, but yeah. He's, he surely can't keep pumping out 130s every week. Um, this one's going to be surprising, but I've got McRae in number nine. He's just such a consistent scorer. Like, where is he? He's. I mean, for all the shit he's copying. Why is this not moving? He's still averaging nearly 110, so I don't get it. You know, he's if you look here, he's on an upward trend, so five round average 109, three round 115. So yeah, uh, he's not a bad pick at all, but uh, I'll back him in for ninth because I can't trust Bevo at all. Um, and then 10, again, this will surprise people. I've got Callum Mills there. We know that he's he as well is capable of massive scores like two hundreds and shit. Uh, I don't think he's going to stay in defence much longer. I think Sydney, like he's way down here somewhere. There we go, number thirty three at the moment, averaging a hundred. So he's playing an absolutely shitty role, and he's still averaging a hundred. I think sooner or later, horse is going to have to just put him back in the middle and leave him there because Sydney is starting to struggle. So I'll back him in to come good. So he's gonna he's value at the moment if, if people are looking at it. if you if you agree and you think he's gonna come good then yeah I'll be getting him in real soon but yeah it's a big gamble um, and then the guy's unlucky I got Petrarca um you know he's a bit inconsistent his disposal lets him down and stuff but he'll be thereabouts like he is every year um, Parish he's a bit the same. I think he'll go like 110 or something. Uh, Merritt, he's about the same as Parrish. So, like, all these guys are so similar. And any of them could easily be top 10 as well. And Merritt always has a better second half of the year. Um, Dugowie, I don't think he'll quite keep up what he's doing, but I think that he'll... This is, like, his breakout year where he's going to finally be consistent. So, he'll be around the mark. And then Josh Kelly, if he can stay fit, He's an interesting one because if he if he does stay fit and doesn't miss another game, he could easily be like even top six or something mids. But I just don't have any faith that he'll stay fit. So yeah, I got him on the smoky list. And then rounding out that is LDU. So people have written him off already, but um, I think as the season wears on, teams will stop caring as much about trying to stop him. And 
they won't really pay too much respect to North Melbourne, so he'll probably start to have better games like he did in the back half of last year. So moving on to the Rucks, obviously number one, English. Um, I didn't didn't predict it coming into the season. Uh, he needs to stay fit, and obviously he's doing really well so far. Doesn't look like any signs of carrying any injuries. He's just got, got so many avenues to score. Like he just he's a seagull. Like he doesn't even score like a conventional ruck. So he's really good in that way because when he comes up against other good rucks like um like Shrek, it's not going to affect him that he's not winning bulk hitouts and stuff. So if you compare him to like a Wits, Wits needs to score bulk hitouts or he's not going to get much. Um. So yeah, he's top player in the game at the moment and like in terms of super coach and 130 plus average, uh, that's insane. So uh, number two, I've got Gorn. I think that he'll outscore Shrek from here on if he stays fit. It's pretty obvious that he's seen as the number one over Grundy. Um, even after all the weeks out, he he came back on the weekend and just looked really good. Like, he's just unstoppable in the air. So I can see him farming points again pretty soon. He can do it all. Um, yeah, he's probably even got more scoring avenues than English, I think. Like, he's a, he's a better contested mark, and he can he's a better ruck as well, like tap ruck, so. But yeah, I can't see him outscoring English. Um, and then three is Shrek. So... He's turned out to be a really good pick, and I'm regretting going Marshall over Shrek. Um, Shrek's finally consistent this year, I think, so hopefully he can keep that up for all the owners, and hopefully for us non-owners, he doesn't keep this up, but what can you do? Um, so I've only picked the three rucks because I think they're the only three that are really viable. Um, Marshall's been a bit of a flop, and... Um, who's the other one? Oh, Cameron was good until he got injured. So, he wouldn't be too far from coming back though, I guess. But I don't know if he's going to be the same. That's an interesting one. Right, so, on to the forwards now. I am willing to bet that Jezza is going to stay number one from here on out. He just looks incredible. Like, he's even getting cheap touches off half back now like he goes up forward and he'll score like four goals in a quarter like he did against west coast or three goals or whatever and then for the next quarter he'll just be farming like dacos style handball receives off half back so yeah i don't know why he's doing that but if he keeps doing that he's just going to keep scoring and yeah i can't see it stopping i think he's just again i don't give a shit about the role in terms of this guy like I'm not a fan myself of picking key forwards, but when players are that good, they're just going to score. And in my opinion, he's the best player in the comp right now. Um, I've got Dunkley in number two. I think he'll come good. Everyone predicted him to be number one at the start of the year. Uh, we haven't really seen it yet, but um, for all the criticism, he hasn't been bad at all. So let me just get the forwards up here. Yeah, so Dunkley's still got 109, and he's still copping criticism because everyone expected him to be, like, top five in the comp. And I did too. I thought he would have it all his own way at Brisbane. It's not worked out that way, but it, I think it's coming. Like I said, they're going to work their shit out, and, yeah, it'll happen. Um, Taranto, number three. It doesn't matter that his disposal efficiency is shit. Like, he just keeps on scoring because he's just a contested beast and he's the main man now for Richmond there's no like him and Hopper there's no uh, threat to their role at all they're just going to have it all their own way for the rest of the year I don't think anyone bothers to tag Taranto or Hopper for that for that matter um, yeah Taranto is just playing full time mid now so lock him in for top three for sure uh I got Rosie in number four. 
didn't start him. Obviously, I went Golden, which hasn't turned out too too good over the last couple of weeks. Um, Rosie's just yeah, he's another one that's more consistent this year. He's not getting massive scores or anything, but he's also he's he sorted his floor out. So he's uh yeah doing well, hundred and three average, and yeah, I think he'll keep that up. Probably that hundred hundred and five average for him. Um, probably could go higher. All he needs is a couple, like, because he's consistent and has the low, oh, sorry, the high floor now. All he needs is, like, one or two massive games, and it's going to lift his average right up. Um, and then Cogs in number five. He is inconsistent. His last two weeks before this were rat shit, and then this week was great. So the reason I'm confident on him, though, is because he's not, he doesn't seem to be affected by, like, other people in the in or out of the team. He's just been finding the ball every week. It's just a matter of what he does with it. So I'd like to hope that he's working on that and he's mindful of it. And Yeah, he's a quality player, so he'll, he'll be thereabouts. Uh, six, I have Zeebel. I bet against him being a keeper at the start of the year. And now I think I'm going to have to get him in. I can see him continuing what he's doing. Like, again, no one's going to pay North Melbourne any respect, so why they get... They're not going to bother doing anything about Zeebel, especially with Sheezel around, so... Yeah, I think he'll be uh, F6. Uh, yeah, he's just a, a seagull. As long as Clarko keeps him playing that role, there's nothing to suggest that he won't be. Like, Hall's not affected him, if you watch the game on the weekend. And Hall's always, like one kick away from tearing something, so it wouldn't be an issue anyway. Right, so F7. And this is an odd pick. I've gone Hawkins. So Geelong, are, as I said, they're really starting to hit their straps now, and Cameron going crazy is helping Hawkins because there's there seems to be less attention being paid to Hawkins, and they're worried about Cameron because well, he's the better player now, but... If you have a look back, Hawkins has always been up there for the top the top overall scorers in the year. Like he's always been like top eight and stuff in the last five years or whatever. Uh, he had a really shitty start to the year, but I think from here on, he's just going to revert back to his normal self. So he's probably not a bad um, value pick, if you agree with me. Like he could very easily go better than Zeebel from here out. But who knows? Like it's, it is a gamble to take old guys like Zeebel and Hawkins anyway, but yeah, you got to get you got to get an advantage on the competition somehow. Hawkins will be really low owned, so what's he averaging? Where even is he? Wow, he's way down. Here he is. <laughs> so nearly eighty-two. And I don't I don't know if he's even tunned yet. Oh, he's got two tons. So it appears he likes beating up on the shitty teams. Yeah, that's... It's probably my most uh, controversial pick here, and not for the sake of being controversial. As I said, go back and have a look at his consistency over the last five years. He's always up near the top in the end, so... He had the slow start, but as I said, it doesn't matter about what's already been it's from here on and then rounding out the eight this is probably more like blind faith than anything but i got golden i think that he's he's had a few shitty weeks but sydney will come good and he'll come good with them still averaging 90 we saw in the preseason that he can put out an absolute monster score so a bit like rosie if he puts out one or two of them it's going to lift him right up there um, but yeah, I'm probably just hoping more than anything there. So I haven't got Sheasel in the eight. Uh, people probably disagree with that. He's currently only eighth anyway, like for average. So <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't think he's going to keep this up. Like I th even Dacos last year, he had times where he had like a down month and stuff. It's just going to happen with the young guys. Their body's not acclimatized yet fully to AFL so um is he a keeper 
maybe. Like, he just as easily could be. But yeah, I don't know. There's too many question marks on him right now. But I think if you trade him this week, you're insane. But if I can work out how to do it, I think I'm going to um, loophole him. Because I said it in the last video, if he drops another 50 and you got, say, uh, Van Ruin or someone drops like an 80 or 90, you've just got like 30 or 40 points up on the rest of the comp. But yeah, it's got to work out how to do that. So that's my predictions for, uh, you know, like the top eight to 10 for the rest of the season. So only from this point on, what's already been doesn't count. Let me know in the comments if you agree and if you have any of your own uh, unique picks that you think will be up there and let me know why. But yeah, um, hope you enjoyed that for something different and good luck with your players being named in the team tonight. Uh, hopefully not too much carnage. I'm going to have to deal, it looks like, with Laird being out. I can't see him playing, so another week of having to field some shit rookie. I'm hanging by a thread. Yeah, I'll make a make another video, I think, showing the trades this week if I get time. So I'll see you in that one. And if I don't, good luck.